What up, players? It's World Boss Tay up in this mode. We started painting up our Storm Priest for the Imperial Guard Army, and uh, let me tell you what colors we used. Corn Red and Mephiston Red for the robes, Rakarth Flesh for all of the bones, parchment, and cloth. That's not the red cloth. Um, Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone for the flesh. We used, I was about to say Calvin Brown, Mornfang Brown and Steel Legion Drab for the wood and the ropes. Lead Belcher for the silver. Balthazar Gold for the gold. And for the chainsword there, we used Averlin Sunset, Irio Yellow, Abaddon Black, and Administratum Gray. We used Dark Reaper for the glass on the back there. And I believe that's it for the washes. We used Agrax Earthshade and <clears throat> uh, Raiklin Flesh Tone. So, I hope you guys like it. There's not much we can do to finish him up except paint on some highlights, but we'll try to get to that because I am about to leave on a jet plane and I do not have much time, so it's gonna be minimal highlights to get this guy finished, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hey players, what is up? And welcome to my first Let's Paint video for getting some paint on our 40K Lewis. So uh, here's our model that we converted up, super awesome, and we're going to get started with the skin tone. So for that, I'm going to be using Bugman's Glow. As always, I am also using my handy dandy wet palette here. And uh, that is just simply going to be a parchment paper put over some water in a clamshell. Use it to mix and dilute your paints, and it's going to give them a great, uh, give you a lot more paint control over the, over the model, control of the paint when you're painting. Do -do 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 -do. I doubt we'll get very far, oops, with Lewis, but, 40K Lewis, but I wanted to get him started before I leave on my trip to San Francisco. Lady Boss and I are going to go spend some time with her family up there. And so, yeah, we'll be, we'll be gone throughout New Year's. Of course, if you're watching this in the future, then none of that matters. So yeah, this is a converted Ministorm Priest, and uh, I've seen a lot of great conversions out there online. Mine was kind of done in the John Blanche style of just weird, crazy, craziness everywhere. And yeah, if you look at some of the the articles that he's come up with on on White Dwarf, some of his models from his Mordheim or from his Inquisitorial—that's what it is—Inquisitorial warbands, just unbelievable stuff. John Blanche and his artist friends just come out with some very dark, almost Lovecraftian looking figures and paint jobs. <clears throat> so even though this is for my converted figure here, you could use it for any Ministorum priest. We'll give you, I'll give you some tips and some consistent color schemes that you'll see on all Ministorum Priests, or mostly all, that Games Workshop produces. And my sources are some of the Games Workshop models, along with Fantasy Flight artwork for their role-playing games like Dark Heresy and Rogue Trader, stuff like that. Lewis, you are ripped. Ah, thank you! I like to hit the gym before I go to the clubs. I thought you renounced your old clubbing ways to serve the Emperor. Yes, I still like to get in a good workout. P90X and Insanity and Jillian Michaels. Next thing is the robes. Now the robes are super important because they're the most iconic things on these figures. 
And you want to be painting your missionaries or your priest's robes first with corn red. Now for my figure, there's some layers to his robes. So if you look at any artwork or any of the figures that Games Workshop has painted at, up as Ministorum priests, the red is the predominant color with cream or white being used as the spot color. So I'm gonna be painting the main part of this guy's robes red and then you can see some over layered parts that are going to be followed soon after with cream. Did somebody say whipped cream? No, Igor, I said with cream. Oh, I like, I like to have my food with cream as well. Coffee and, and stewed cat. I don't know if any of you who are new to my channel, new subscribers would know, but last year I went on a on a trip to Seattle and to uh, Los Angeles in the Christmas time, and I brought, I brought Igor with me. And this year I'm going to be bringing Igor and Lewis. Just kind of put them in a Tupperware container and bring them along. San Francisco. I left my heart there once. But it's all right, I, I went back and I got it. Okay, if your priest has robes, or with sleeves, and you want to be painting the sleeves with corn red as well. Now if they have cuffs on their sleeves, then you want to make sure you leave the cuffs for now as we're going to be painting the cuffs in our cream color. And here we go. Done with that. Good, we're gonna let that dry for a second. While that is drying, we're going to take Rackhart Flesh, which is the base for our cream colors. And we're gonna be painting any uh, parchment as well as his sleeves. And uh, in this case, his cloth right down here. Wet palette, wet palette, wet palette. Use the wet palette. Yes, yeah, so I'm listening to all the webcasts and podcasts of different uh, gaming podcasts, and I've heard that with Tyranids coming out pretty soon, like just around the corner, 
The next 40k army rumored to be coming out is the Imperial Guard. So I thought it might be a good idea to do a bunch of guard videos. <clears throat> and then I got scared all of a sudden because I thought, oh wait a minute, what if they come out with the new Ministorm Priest figure? But uh, something tells me that they're, they haven't yet. That's not on the list of things that are rumored to be coming out soon, so that's that's good. I'd be, <laughs> I'd be pretty bummed out if they came out with a figure like this one that they didn't have to convert, but it's all right, 40K Lewis, you're still, you're still awesome. Ah, thank you. Okay, so we're also gonna be painting any parchment, like I said, so we'll start with this, uh, the book and the little parchment and all the purity seals. Warbosh, have you heard the good word? Um, no. The Emperor is coming to save you. Ooh. I found him at the clubs. Okay, and parchment. Oh, man, it's really easy to get your paints mixed up. So, yeah, you always want to make sure that you don't have your wet paint mixing on the model. Simple enough to just, oops, pull your brush away and wash it off and get a little bit more of that original color on your brush. Oh, he's got a little tabard back here, too. Okay, next what we're doing is, what do we got here on the back too? I put so much stuff, I have to remember where everything is. Purity seal, purity seal, parchment, book. Oops. Oh yeah, afterwards, um, after the last video where we built this guy up, I also added some bells another skull and a time hourglass as if things weren't crazy enough on this figure already I really love this book What you reading there, Lewis? Harry Potter. Ooh. And last but not least is this back banner. Yeah, so I've decided that red and this cream color are gonna be the overall two main colors that you see when you're looking at this model.
to take care of your brush, make sure that when you dip it into the paint, the paint doesn't get all the way up to where the metal part meets the bristles, the ferrule. If they dry there, then your paintbrush is going to not last as long. Need a new brush. The detail brush that I'm using is, is great for detail, but need something a little bit more heavy duty. Most of my brushes is another question that I get asked a lot. Most of my brushes are from Citadel. I forgot, I also paint the uh, any skulls that you have or bones. Some of you might have some, some bone fetishes. Hanging skulls, Games Workshop loves their skulls, so we love to use them. We're being pretty thick and sloppy with the with the brushes and the paint so far, so uh, I apologize for that. It's almost I don't want to say it's a rush job, but uh, there's just so much of this model that's covered in this one surface, couple surface areas that uh, it's it's okay to do multiple layers. Just personally, though, I'm kind of going pretty pretty quick over them. Um, Okay. Uh, for Lewis's uh, hair and stuff, I was debating whether or not to make him younger. Uh, and in the end, I decided to have him be kind of dark haired, but with some uh, some some gray in it. So we're gonna start with a dark gray base and I've decided to go with Skaven Blight Dinge because it's not completely gray there's a there's like a little bit of brown a light brown in in there and that's really good we can play with that All right, here's all the hair that got a little bit of red from painting the robe earlier. And I'm also gonna see if I can paint right over his upper lip. Batty. Okay, next we're going for the uh, wood of his eviscerator. <clears throat> for that, I'm gonna be using Steel Legion Drab. This is actually going to be the wood for all of the wooden pieces. So he's got a back banner, um, and the back banner has two wooden poles keeping it up. And I believe that's it. Yeah, behind this book, this uh, little shelf for his book, that's going to be Steel Legion Drab as well.
So if any of you know any good places for uh, anything in San Francisco, like a good theater or a good um, mall or a good place to go shopping or, or a cool, if there's any games workshop stores or battle bunkers out there, we haven't, or I haven't, I guess, done any any research on, on anything because I've been trying to wrap up the rest of my, the, the school year at my school where I teach. So I haven't had a chance to really go and find anything. Also, since we're going to be spending a lot of time with our family, there's not going to be too much time to go out and do stuff, but it would be nice to hear from you all on what kind of activities and stuff there is out there. I'm using steel legion drab on these on these wooden poles here, but I'm think I'm looking at it. I might also be using steel legion drab also for any ropes, uh, the ropes that are holding the book to the wooden plank, and uh, some ropes hanging off of bells here in the back. So. Yeah, we might make the, the wood a little bit darker and the ropes a little bit lighter. So let's take that steel legion drab since we've got it open. And let's color in any ropes that you see on your model. So I tried to make this figure look like a mix of gothic and 40k, which is why he's got the books, the hanging skulls, the bells hanging off of the back of his armor, as well as the power pack and the last pistol and of course the giant eviscerator with all the, the, the tubes and the wires and everything. Okay, so the ropes here. And you can see that I'm making some mistakes, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to uh, repaint the pages of the book in just a second. Okay. Alright, pages of the book, we're going back over with Rack Hearth Flesh. This is more of a cleanup stage than painting something new. Also, you can use this time since the rack art flesh must have dried or should have dried on your other pieces that you've painted, like here on the back banner, that are streaky. You can go back, paint over any of the streaky parts. Okay. <clears throat> and last step we're going to take in this part of the video is we're going to paint Morn Fang Brown onto all of the wood pieces. It's going to mix with the Steel Legion Drab, or if your Steel Legion Drab is already dried, then it's going to make a nice little layer color over it. You could have started with Morn Fang Brown, but I prefer it when the uh, if when you put the Morn Fang Brown on first, you might see it streaking, kind of like how the Rack Art Flesh on the book pages did, and when you've got Steel Legion Drab underneath it, then I figure, or I've found, that I like the way that looks rather than just seeing the gray plastic underneath. Now you could save time by not doing the Steel Legion Drab, but again, uh, I feel like it gives a better overall finish when that is the base color. For all this wood. And then if it mixes with it because it's still it's still drying, the Steel Legion Drab is still drying, then um, all the better, I found. Now 
So thanks to everybody who's supported my channel and been commenting and um, you know interacting with me over YouTube and Google+. Uh, I really appreciate all of the support and all the times you guys share, like, and comment on my videos to help get the word out. And um, I can't believe we broke 8,000 this year. I was talking to the lady boss about it and she said that she remembers last year when I barely had like 4,000 or 5,000. And in the span of one year, the channel's grown so much. So thanks to all the new subscribers for coming on board. And to all my old subscribers, thanks for always uh, being so kind, supportive, and encouraging with all of my projects. And to the one person who keeps disliking all of my videos, like the minute they come out on, the minute they're finished uploading, I always get like one dislike seconds after I upload a video. Uh, to that person, whatevers. <laughs> Is that you, Mom? Are you disliking my videos because I didn't go into medicine? All right. <clears throat> Whew, we did so much. And I think I've got my purple nearby. We're gonna paint the purity seals, the wax. Just like we did with the Vestroyans because the majority of them, the, the model is red. We're gonna be doing it in purple. So Nagaroth Knight. One, two, three. Okay, uh, oh, anything that's hanging on his waist, we're going to do in Steel Legion Drab. So, pouches, um, holsters, hip holsters, anything like that. It's gonna be Steel Legion Drab. I'm trying to get, if you can't tell, I'm trying to get all of the non metallic pieces painted, base coats done so that we can move on to the fun bits. We're gonna go back over with uh, Rack Hard Flesh on all of the streaky parts, and then we'll come back. All right, now we're gonna take our lead belcher and we're gonna be painting all the chains and any pieces of the model that we wanna be silver. So I'm going to paint the entire Chaos Space Marine backpack, silver, and then we're gonna, oops, then we're gonna sort it out after that. But like the ends here of the banner pole, the back banner pole, the end of his weapon, any of the silver chains, the handle of the last pistol, most of the metallics on this model are going to be done up in silver. The skull on the holster, the, uh, any chains, the teeth of the chain sword. I'm planning on painting my chain sword, kind of like I painted my Dark Angels Sergeant's chain sword in a black and yellow chevron deal. But you could, if you want, just paint the whole thing in silver. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the whole backpack in silver for now at least and then maybe I'll get inspired to do something with it but you you want to imagine that this figure is very utilitarian and that the model or the character of the Ministorm priest isn't much into the uh, ornate fine find things. I mean, there, it depends, right? A lot of it could be different. Maybe you're saying that your Ministorum Priest is one of those very wealthy 
um, very, what's it called, spoiled and funded, well-funded ministers, priests, or deacons, whatever you want to call it, that is traveling the universe on a very wealthy pension. But I kind of like to think that most of the priests that accompany Imperial Guard armies are kind of batty and loony and don't have much money and just kind of go around because of the the religious fervor to travel with the Emperor's armies the hammer of the Emperor and to spread the good word throughout the galaxy So all the metal braces on the back here, your back banner, all the chains. Yeah, and uh, like a lot of people have said, you could use these figures for other role-playing games. Like, say you're playing a missionary in in Rogue Trader, or one of those priest characters in Dark Heresy, or I think even Only War has a kind of priest kind of character to it. This is how you would build them up. I, I always like incorporating miniatures into a role-playing game. I feel like it immerses just a little bit more. Okay, you should have like rivets and whatnot along with all these chains, so paint those up. Like There are nuts and bolts and rivets on the back of this book piece here. Okay, and uh, just double check, go over with your, your figure that, you, uh, that you're going to paint from all the different angles. The teeth of his chainsword here in the back. Right, let's get this. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of a highlight on his skin next, then we'll get into his chainsword a little bit more. So I'm gonna look for Cadian Flesh Tone. Cadian Flesh Tone. Ta da! And this we're going to be painting it on all of the skin areas, highlighting our Bugman's Glow.
I've been trying this new technique when feathering the paint on my figures, and it's just basically put a little bit of paint on the edge of your brush, and you really, really just carefully poke and feather at the model rather than painting one large swoosh of paint across the surface area. I've been actually feathering like this for a long time, but I find that not only is it good when using detailed stuff, but or when painting detailed stuff, but yeah, all kinds of techniques or surfaces it's good for. Next we're going to tackle that gold color. We're going to be using Balthazar Gold. This is just going to be a base, but we're going to look for little things that we can use as accent colors. So, for example, these bells. Sometimes I see how easy Balthazar goes on, and I feel like those old guys that sit outside their 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 houses on their porches and just talk about how how bad the paint used to be. Like I remember the old dwarf bronze, how how difficult it went on, or the old I don't even remember what the shining gold shining gold was the worst. Trying to get shining gold on something was just impossible. Right, let's do gold on the vents. Just the rims, not the grills on the inside. And let's do a gold on the, uh, and nah, we'll leave that. On these rims on the inside. Okay, and Oh, I forgot the hourglass. I'm going to paint this up in lead belcher. I love this bit, the hourglass bit. It's just so, so warhammery. Morn Fang Brown. Now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the figure and seeing what's still not painted. And I'm trying to use what colors I've already used. Like you see I'm not going to throw in a bright blue or green out of nowhere just because I feel like it. I'm kind of trying to match what's already there. Okay, and we go back to Balthazar Gold for the copper wire, or the wire, electrical wire.
So for those of you who play my tutorials while you're painting, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. And um, I hope I can continue to film videos you like in the new year. Not only videos that you'll like, but videos that you'll find helpful or just fun to paint to. Alright. Next, I'm going to use my Haverland Sunset to paint the yellow on our eviscerator. Yeah, just be careful when you're painting. Yellow is a very tricky color. Let it dry for a bit. Serious, you guys. You're going to be using serious purple on this wax paper. Or the wax. Rack Art Flesh is going to go onto the foot bandages if you're using a flagellant model. He should have some foot bandages, any kind of bandages. Got bandages around their eyes or around their arms, around their face, any kinds of bandages. Rack Art Flesh. Now we're just cleaning up. I'm using lead belcher for the rivets. And I'm going to use Dark Reaper for the glass in the hourglass. Don't worry if you want to fill it up with sand, I wish you should. At the very beginning we're just getting the, the glass effect. Okay, and now our yellow should be dried, just about. So we're going to go in with Abaddon Black. Oh, this is exciting. I haven't done chevrons in a long time. So, let's mark off our angles. Don't worry if it's not perfect. This is just the first go round. But we're mainly 
looking for are the angles. If you make a mistake, don't worry. Let that dry for a second. We'll come back and we'll fix the mistakes with yellow. But in order to do that, you have to let the black dry, which is why it's really important to not get discouraged. Sometimes I like to align with the teeth of the chain sword, but more often than not, I just find it just simple enough to just go in and paint a diagonal line as best you can. I know a lot of people out there don't have the steady hands for this, so you could use a Micron Arts pen to do the same thing, to sketch your, sketch your lines in place. Okay, let's go back now and see if we can fix these edges. I'm just using Everland Sunset again. We don't have to highlight with our yellows until we get the perfect length and width to our chevrons. The beauty with this is you can go back and forth with your blacks and your yellows over and over and over again and it's not going to uh, really affect too much as long as you use your wet palette to thin your paint down and as long as you don't go crazy. Alright, while we wait for that to dry, why don't we highlight up our priest's robe using Mephiston Red. I'm just painting the top parts, leaving the corn red in all of the shadows as much as I can. And again, I'm trying to feather, feather the paint as I go.
Nice. Should probably wrap up pretty soon. This is only part one. I want to get. Uh, I want to get this all uploaded if I can before we head out to San Francisco tonight. But before I do, let's get on to some final highlighting for the chainsword chevrons and some shading for the whole model. So thin coats of paint. Thin coats of paint, multiple layers. Let it dry, then come back. I'm going to go with Irio Yellow. So one of those tricky colors that I've noticed is very, very finicky. So don't use too much. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. And for the gray, we are going to do, or the, for the black, rather, we're going to do uh, all these grays look the same. Scale. Found it, it's Administratum Gray. That's the one I like, but you could use Dawnstone or, or any other gray really that you like. What I'm doing is I'm painting on the side that's lowest to the hilt. Just a single straight line that separates the black from the yellow. What it does is it creates an optical illusion of the black having a highlight. You don't have to do both sides, just do one. Black, highlight, and yellow. There. There we go. Also, I gotta take some administratum gray and put some grays at the temple. At the temples of Lewis's hair. Because he's an old man. And also at the beard. Perfect. All right, we are getting there, guys. Let's do some washes and then we'll wrap up. So, washing time. Agrax Earthshade for most of it. For the flesh, we're gonna use Raikland Flesh Shade, but for for the reds, for the for everything on his back, we're gonna give him a kind of dirty dirty look for all of this uh, parchment. And for all the wood and the silvers and the metallics.
If you get any on the skin, that's okay. Let's try to... I'm going for Raeklin Flesh Shade. And there you have it, a nice ruddy sunburnt Minostaurum priest. Thanks for watching everybody, see you in the next one.